Number 12. 1860 Mystery Wreck Located in southwestern Africa, Namibia is home to a 500-mile stretch of barren shoreline that's notorious for unforgiving conditions. It's littered with dozens of decaying ships as well as the remains of animals and sometimes people who lost their lives in a battle against the elements. Death is ever-present along the Skeleton Coast, where over 500 vessels have run aground or capsized over the years thanks to thick fog, rough seas, unpredictable currents, and heavy winds. Even sailors who were lucky enough to survive their initial wrecks and reach dry land often died of thirst in the scorching heat without ever getting help or safety. In 1860, the crew of an unknown vessel washed up along the Skeleton Coast. All of the men died under the heat of the oppressive desert sun. Their remains went unnoticed until 1941, when 12 headless skeletons were found lined up in a row. A slate nearby read, I am proceeding to a river 60 miles north, and should anyone find this and follow me, God will help him. The identities of the crew members, the person who wrote the mysterious message on the slate, and their wrecked ship remain a mystery to this day. Number 11. C.S. Chamarel Launched in the mid-1970s, the C.S. Chamarel was a French deep-sea vessel called a cable layer. The 443-foot-long ship's primary function was to place underwater cables for telecommunications, electric power transmission, military, and more. It laid cables on and between all continents except Antarctica, and even laid the first Israeli-made cable. In 2000, the Charamel set an all-time world record for laying the deepest undersea communication cables. While repairing a cable system between Cape Town, South Africa and Europe back in August 2012, the ship caught on fire. It was 68 miles north of the coastal town Hentys Bay, Namibia, when the blaze first broke out for reasons that remain a mystery to this day. In fact, many of the details surrounding this incident are murky to say the least. One of the few known solid facts about the disaster is that the ship was driven aground on the skeleton coast after erupting into flames. All 51 to 56 crew members evacuated to a fishing vessel called the Moni. Only six crew members were injured and none died, making them much luckier than many past shipwrecked crews who found themselves stranded on the skeleton coast. Their ship's fire raged for over a day, while the research vessel Nathaniel Mochulili helped put it out. A salvage team was then sent to retrieve the remains of the Charamel. Number 10. Arisina Wreck Built in the 19th century, the Arisina was a Norwegian ship used by the Damerland Guano Company. One day, it sprang a leak during rough weather conditions while traveling to Cape Cross in 1896 with coal and other supplies. The ship was offloading with plans to return to the United Kingdom with guano when it became clear that the leak would be serious. Additional pumps were then provided to the Arisina, but the crew's attempts to save it were useless. After two days of trying to pump water out, it became clear that the vessel was completely doomed. The crew returned to Europe on another ship, while strong winds blew the Arisina ashore. Over the next few years, various parts of the wooden vessel showed up along the shoreline, but no recognizable traces of it have been seen in quite a while. So if the wreck still does exist today, nobody knows where it is. Number 9. Balgawan Castle The Balgawan Castle was a 330-foot steamship that ran aground in an area called the Easter Cliffs in 1904. A large cargo of candles was found in the wreck, which prospectors used for a couple years at nearby mining sites. Today, the ship's hull is visibly implanted into the rocks at the cliff's base. At one point, a miner named Monocle Johnson found a stash of old but perfectly good and useful sailor's clothing inside that had been packed away so neatly that it remained intact despite the efforts of time. Johnson and his fellow miners made good use of these items. Reaching the wreck involves walking through a desolate beach covered with the scattered bones of whales who met their unfortunate end along the skeleton coast. On the way to the Balgawan Castle, Visitors can also walk past a former mining site that dates back to the 1920s. It consists of an aged truck with wooden-spoked wheels and an old shack. Number 8. Sir Charles Elliot On December 2, 1942, a tugboat called the Sir Charles Elliot arrived at the wreck site of the Dunedin Star. It was no easy feat, but the small boat managed to help and rescue 43 survivors. The Sir Charles Elliot left the site the next day and set a course for Walvis Bay. Around midnight or so, the captain gave responsibility to the ship over to the second mate, Tommy Cox. Six hours later, the captain woke up to the sound and feeling of an intense crash. The vessel had run aground on some rocks north of a spot called Rocky Point, thanks to a shifting coastline and some inaccurate navigational charts. Luckily, the captain and most of his crew were able to get ashore after a terrifying fight against the raging tides. First mate Angus McIntyre and deckhand Matthias Koroseb tragically lost their lives, though. A few days later, the survivors were ferried to a plane and flown off the Skeleton Coast to safety. Would you ever visit a place called Skeleton Coast? Tell us in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 7. SS City of Baroda 
Built in 1918, the SS City of Baroda was a British merchant steamer that had a relatively short career. The combination passenger and cargo ship was torpedoed in the Second World War on April 2, 1943, while traveling near the Skeleton Coast. It was serving as part of a merchant convoy when it was struck by one of three German torpedoes about 90 miles south of Lüderitz Bay. The impact broke the vessel into two pieces. Because of this, the badly damaged ship's crew abandoned it for rescue. Sadly, one crew member and 12 passengers died in the struggle. Two days later, the city of Baroda drifted ashore and was deemed a total loss after the harsh waves had broken it up even more. The remaining 129 crew members and 191 passengers were then picked up by the HMS Cape Warwick and taken over to Cape Town. Number 6. The Copenhagen The five-masted Danish ship called the Copenhagen served as a naval training vessel until its mysterious disappearance in December 1928. At the time, it was one of the world's largest sailing ships. Nobody knows exactly where the Copenhagen sank during its unlucky 10th voyage from Denmark to Buenos Aires, but some believe it may have capsized off the skeleton coast. When the ship's last radio transmission came through on December 22nd, its captain said they were about 900 miles from the remote British-owned island of Tristan de Cunha and that all was going well, but the ship's crew was never found. Pieces of the wreck were seen in several places, though. There were also multiple reported sightings of the ship itself, but none were ever fully confirmed. One of the creepiest accounts came from the crew of an Argentine freighter back in 1930 when they reported seeing a five-masted phantom ship during a storm. In the following weeks, several other sightings were reported, but whether or not it was actually the Copenhagen remains a mystery to this day. Number 5. MFV Zela Built in 1975, the MFV Zela was a South African fishing trawler that was stranded near the Namibian town of Hentes Bay back in 2008. It ran aground in a popular fishing spot known as Divala during the early morning hours and was far too damaged to repair. The ship was already stripped down to its shell when it was sold as scrap material to an Indian company, but it never reached its new home in Bombay. In fact, the vessel didn't go far at all. It broke free from its tow rope before getting the chance to leave Namibian water and then started to drift with two crewmen aboard. They spent the night stranded on the Zela in treacherous weather with nothing but walkie-talkies and life jackets to protect them from the elements. Luckily, the boat drifted back toward a fishing area which would have normally been empty on an average weekday morning. But thankfully, it was a holiday, and an entire crowd turned up for what they thought would be an uneventful day at the beach. A group of fishermen told local authorities about the distressed ship, while two men bravely got onto a rubber raft and went out to rescue the crew members. It took them an hour just to get the raft close enough to the Zela, where the stranded sailors had no choice but to jump down and hope they landed properly. The fishermen looked on and cheered as the crewmen took the leap of faith and thankfully made it onto the raft. Everyone involved was extremely lucky to survive the ordeal with only minor injuries. The Zela remains in the water to this day, where it started to noticeably deteriorate from being constantly battered by ongoing waves. Number 4. Barge 77 A diamond mining vessel called the Barge 77 was laid to rest on the Skeleton Coast in 1963 after breaking free from its moorings. The wind blew it into some rocks in the middle of the night during a heavy swell, bringing the vessel's career to an end. While the rapidly decaying wreck is still present for now, it's in an area that's not normally open to visitors. Those who wish to see it are required to get a special permit. Some parts of the Skeleton Coast are off-limits to tourists or even heavily guarded thanks to their proximity to the De Beers Diamond Mine, which has been operating since the early 20th century. After the first diamond was found in 1908, a 10,000 square mile area was closed off to the public. Nobody is allowed there without the express permission of De Beers, hence the property's nickname, the Forbidden Area. The off-limit zone has over 200 miles of coastline, meaning there could be more buried wrecks just waiting to be discovered. Number 3. Edward Bolin Death is ever present along the 500-mile skeleton coastline. It's here in the desolate and extreme heat that you'll find a shoreline littered with hundreds of dead animals and dozens of shipwrecks that lost their battle against nature. One of the region's most famous wrecks is the 310-foot-long cargo ship known as the Edward Bolin, which ran aground back in 1909 after getting trapped in a blinding fog. The ship was partially buried in sand as the desert crept up on the shoreline. It currently sits 1,000 feet from the water near two other major wrecks, the cargo ship MV Dunedin Star from 1942 and the Otavi, which floundered and sank in a nearby crescent-shaped bay in 1945. Some of the wrecks that scatter the coast are much older, dating as far back as the 16th century. They serve as a sobering reminder of just how long death and destruction have defined this region. When South Africa took control of the territory known formerly as the German Southwest Africa, now called the country of Namibia, in 1919, 
hundreds of Germans were deported from the region using the Cawdor Castle ship. Six years later, on July 30, 1925, the vessel ran aground south of where the Edward Bolin is found. It included a large cargo full of whiskey crates. Number 2. SS Gertrude Warman II Built in 1893, the SS Gertrude Warman II was a German passenger and cargo ship that originally sailed under the name of Pfalz. The vessel was renamed after it was purchased by Warman Lines in 1904. While traveling from Germany to Swakopmund later that year, the Gertrude Warman found itself in a thick fog that forced it to run aground on a reef along the Skeleton Coast. At the time, the ship was packed with horses, war material, mail and other cargo, as well as 400 soldiers. Luckily, everyone survived and they even had some help. A gunboat called the Veneta sailed up from Swakopmund to aid in the salvage effort. The wreck was still visible until 1912 when it was then swallowed up by the water during a heavy storm. Today, the wreck site is marked by a beacon nicknamed the Gertrude Beacon to mark the ship. Number 1. MS Vipava One of the more recent ships to find its resting place along the skeleton coast is the MS Vipava, a Yugoslav freighter that, like many other vessels, got lost in the fog. The 630-ton vessel ran aground back in 1968 while traveling from Yugoslavia to Iran with a cargo load of steel plates, rails, and paper. Both fuel tanks were punctured and started filling with seawater, forcing the captain to turn off the engines. A tugboat called the Otto Seidel tried to pull the Vipava away from the sandbank it had crashed into, but the tow rope quickly broke. Soon enough, the ship's hull was torn in two and water made its way into the engine room. The wreck was visible for many years, serving as a landmark for campers. But the treacherous waters the region is infamous for took a toll on the destroyed ship until all that was left was the engine block, which could only be seen during low tide. But even that's gone now, so there are no longer any visible traces of the historic Vipava. Thanks for watching. Have you ever heard of the Skeleton Coast? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.